It's time for an update on the house. So here's how our bathroom's looking at the moment. Very smart and professional, apart from the tools all over the windowsill still. That's how fresh this is. Um, it's a semi-finished room, as in we've finished that side of it. Uh, because if we go over here, it, we, we still haven't got a sink. But we're working on that. We've still got some peach up there, but quite a lot of the peach is gone. Um, that's still to be painted fully in that corner. But the important bit is we've got a shower cubicle with lovely tiles chosen by myself and Mrs. Hubnut's patented complex shower steampunk arrangement, um, which is slightly confusing, but I shall try and explain what happens. Um, hot water comes in via that pipe. Um, cold water comes in via that pipe and they go through this thermostatic mixing valve down here. So you just turn the shower on, get lovely uh, water out of the shower head, which we hope to replace because it's horrible and plastic. But um, that's how it works. We've also got a separate cold tap if you just want a really cold bracing shower or want to wash down the shower cubicle. So it's all looking very impressive. And we've got a door that actually Sounds a bit like it's in Star Trek. Lovely. Um, but yeah, still, still stuff to do. Uh, we've got to precisely that point. That's where the paint stopped. But we, the important thing is we can have a shower. We've been waiting for the silicon to dry all around the edges because by heck do we need a shower in our own house. We are very grateful to the Woodlands campsite nearby for letting us use their shower facilities for the many weeks it's taken to get to this stage. Uh, oh, you think over there is interesting, do you, Gimbal? I think that's just mess and tools. I think this is better. But there you go, bathroom getting there. Still call it a bathroom, even though there's not a bath in it. The bathroom is eating up all our time at the moment, so we haven't really managed to progress anything else and um, yes this is a typical scene in our house where our windowsill has a pestle and mortar with some um, it's not herbal remedies don't arrest us uh, and a soldering iron and a bit of sandpaper because we're trying to round off this edge on this MDF stuff before we paint it I have done some painting um, that's our reed organ that's been collected tomorrow uh, I'm gonna miss our reed organ but um, I've put a first coat of paint on this windowsill. That's looking much le less like plain old MDF. So that's quite pleasing. But um, yeah, we want to redecorate this room so we can reclaim it and sort this mess out. I've got a piano in there and I haven't played it for weeks and weeks. So stage one, the reed organ is going and um, then we'll have a bit more, um, well, we can decorate this room and start sorting out all this mess and decide whether we really do need quite so many knackered office chairs. Also means we can use this as a temporary bedroom while we redecorate our actual bedroom. Um, if you've not seen a reed organ before, they were very popular uh, at one stage in churches and this one has probably come out of a church. Um, we know a church quite nearby that still has one. And you pump up bellows with your feet. Uh, which allow you to play notes. So um, like a pipe organ, you pull out stops and when you play the key, it blows air through a reed. So um, let's see if I can play a little tune for you. These little paddles either side open up different banks of reeds. So if I do that, I'm literally pulling out all the stops with my knees. So it sounds like this. <laughs> Capable of quite severe volume and um, good bass as well. So that's just one note, but that's one note with no stops, well just one stop, the uh, diapason bass, and that's with all the stops open. And you can um, do a bass coupler as well, so it plays notes by itself. 
which is quite freaky. I quite like that. But alas, the reed organ must go. It is quite old. It is from Liverpool originally. And um, yeah, we, we just, we don't need it. Oh, here comes the train. There's my tire pile. Isn't it scenic? Ah, oh, never really tire of living here. We do need to clean the windows as well. What do you reckon, George? Do you like the steam train? Uh, George, do you like the steam train? No. No, I don't think George does like the steam train. Now, George, do you know you've got fans all over the internet? No. Do you care? No. Look, look, internet is showing you his bum. That's how much he cares. Typical cat. Right, I'm going to attempt to illustrate, if things stop buzzing, what uh, the installation has done for us. So we'll take a reading net. Ah, uh, that's really visible. There we go, 9.9 .9 out there, 16.5 there, and this wall, 19. That's super toasty, and we're not really used to that. So to explain, we've got thin insulation on that wall, and the thicker stuff is on this wall, and the fire is going, and all is pleasant. So certainly it feels a warmer house with our insulation and one day we'll decorate. I wonder if that will happen before or after tidying the garage again. But the main example, if we look at the temperature outside, just above freezing according to this quite an accurate gauge, uh, there's Tuck um, drying in the sun. Uh, she's um, been washed inside. More, more to come on that. But if we scan round to the um, thermostat, you can see it's 16 degrees in here, and normally if it was that cold outside, before we had the insulation fitted, it'd be 14 in here. And while it's certainly true we're getting some solar gain this morning from the um, actual sunshine, um, I, I don't think it can entirely account for it being quite comfortably warm in here. So that's good. Yeah, that's quite a bit milder than the outside temperature, isn't it? So yeah, insulation, well worth having. So all we've got to do now is finish decorating the entire house. I've started reclaiming some of this office space. Uh, we've got, um, I think that's the canvas bags there. If you'd like a hub nut bag, this is what the hub nut bags look like. Oh. They're all over the place. Uh, so there you go, that's a hub nut canvas bag. So you can proudly go shopping and um, all is well. Uh, we, we've checked and that, that they're a good size for taking car magazines. So if you go to a show intended to buy car magazines, then a hub nut bag is exactly what you need. Uh, these are just five pounds now, uh, available at hubnut.org. Sales mode end. So there you go, that's the end of the um, update on the house. It's great, for, we've actually got a shower now. That's um, utterly fantastic, but still an awful lot to do. But we're getting there, progress is being made. So all I shall say is thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.